be kind of a good sign. Well, good afternoon, everybody. How's it going? Good. I'd like to see this kind of passion, this energy, people knowing that they can just chill out for about the next hour, knowing they are going to be hearing talk on anime from a variety of perspectives. Some of it may sound business-like. Some of it may sound like it's from the heart, because I am an anime fan. I am literally a giant anime fan. Literally. I apologise for the horrible joke. That's why I'm hosting this panel. So, you're probably wondering, a few of you, what the heck is Anime Limited? What does that mean? What the heck is Anime Limited? I will tell you. Anime Limited is one of the anime distributors here in the UK. We bring you a variety of titles on DVD and Blu-ray, some digital outings as well, but primarily on DVD and Blu-ray. But what we like to do is something a little bit different for Anime Limited. We like to give you something more of the collector's edition variety. Because I'm sure we can all relate We've looked at photos of what's been available in other countries, maybe in Japan, maybe in America. You see these big, elaborate box sets that come with a ridiculous amount of extras. And you're thinking, I wish I could get my hands on that, but I simply can't, or I can get something like it. We are the something like it, and then some on occasion. What we like to do is bring you a collector's edition style release that is as affordable as possible of some of the big titles that are out there. For example, how many of you like Sword Art Online? Good. We are the ones who have released Sword Art Online Season 2 in the UK. We're releasing over four parts. You can get it as a collector's edition Blu-ray DVD set. Each one coming in a really cool shiny rigid style box. It has a digipack that folds open to reveal the discs. And you also get a booklet with it that contains loads of background information about the series, the characters. It also has interviews with people involved, including in one of the books, get an interview with the people behind the merchandise and they tell you about the Kirito Snuggle Sheet. <laughs> yes, the Kirito Snuggle Sheet is actually a thing. In fact, in Japan, there have been three of them. Because the first version was so popular. So, we do collect edition style releases, but I've mentioned Sword Art Online too. We've also done various films. How many of you have heard of a film called A Letter to Momo? A few of you have. It's a wonderful, wonderful family film. It's a film that deals with some grief, some family loss, and it's about a young girl trying to come to terms with that, and she's having to move to a new island, and she doesn't know what to expect, she doesn't know anyone. I'm sure a variety of us have experienced something similar in some way, myself included. But a small twist comes along in that a few, let's say demons, come along and say hi to her. In fact, there are three of them, and they keep following her around, and she's got no idea why. And they just keep getting in her way, and it is a wonderful film, just full of laughs, full of drama, a mixture of everything. So if you're looking for a film that you really want to just, that you want to just sit down with family and friends, watch suitable for pretty much anyone, A Letter to Momo is the way to go. But we also do other things as well, other titles. For example, there is a film called 009 Re Cyborg, which is actually the next chapter of a very long-running franchise of manga that's been going on in Japan for a very long time. And this is someone's interpretation of the someone being Kenji Kamiyama, who was the director of the Ghost in the Shell standalone complex TV series. How many of you heard of that before? He is a director of that, and this is his vision for what he wants the final chapter to be, because the original author actually passed away before he got a chance to actually write it. So the story was actually left unfinished which is pretty sad, but it's cool that someone was able to give their vision of what could happen next. But some other, other titles that we have in the pipeline. Let's think, what have we got? How many of you guys have heard of a show called Ping Pong? Do you know what? I won't lie, that's more than I thought. I many of you would have heard of it. You can probably guess from the title what it may be about. It is about table tennis, but it's a very, very unique show by Masaki Yuasa, who actually was a director on an episode of Adventure Time and actually got nominated for an Emmy for it. So you've got someone of that calibre fronting this show, which is pretty nuts. Some might even call it Extreme Table Tennis. It's that weird. If, you, if any of you guys have ever watched the Olympics and you've seen people play table tennis and you're wondering, how on earth is that possible with a table tennis table? How are they each like 12 feet back from the table and playing table tennis? If you think that but in anime. And then it gets crazier still. There is loads more 
in the pipeline that we have as well. For example, I've mentioned that we do collector's edition star releases, but we go one step further than that. We also do regular Blu-rays and DVDs. If that's what you want, we do that as well. They may come a bit later, but we do do them. But we also have something that we call the ultimate edition. Now we don't do this with very many, that was a weird, really weird crack. It's like the microphone broke at the thought of an ultimate edition. That is how powerful the ultimate edition is. But now what do ultimate editions entail? It's where we want to go one step further. Where maybe we think, you know what? There is a lot we have to work with. We have a lot at our disposal. There's a lot we want to include in our title. But it, it's, it's just, it's too much for a collector's edition. So we go to the next step, the ultimate edition. A couple of our titles that have had this treatment, one is a series called Terror in Resonance. How many of you have heard of that before? Awesome. If you've not heard of it, it's from the same director who did Cowboy Bebop. There you go, I've got a big thumbs up there. Thank you very much. So Terror in Resonance is by the same director who did Cowboy Bebop, Shinichiro Watanabe. And this series, in our Ultimate Edition set, you get both the DVD and Blu-ray versions, you get it in a wonderfully unique, big, rigid-style box. It almost looks like a glass, like a hammer's been taken to a piece of glass and just smashed into it. It looks awesome. You also get a pretty detailed hardback book full of information. You get interviews with the people involved, including the director himself. You also go behind the scenes and you get some wonderful, wonderful line art from the actual show. It's honestly in our office, it's one of our favorite releases today. And the series is available now, Terror in Resonance. In fact, for those of you who've been in the dealer's room on the second floor, I think it is, it's actually available on the Gundam Mad booth there, where you see all the other anime DVDs and Blu-rays. In fact, pretty much everything I'm mentioning, bar Ping Pong, because that's out on the 11th of July, is available today. But staying on the Ultimate Edition front, what else have we done? We also done a series called Gurren Lagann as an Ultimate Edition. There you go. For record, it is an awesome show, so thank you for the passionate reaction. Gurren Lagann is available as an Ultimate Edition. You can get that today at the Gundam Mad booth on the second floor in the dealer's room. With that, you get the entire series on Blu-ray. Big thumbs up. You get the two movies that compile the series. Big thumbs up. You also get some additional extras, in which include the movies in this instance, that are exclusive to the Ultimate Edition. Another big thumbs up. You get some really nice packaging, big box, and a big hardback book full of wonderful art from the series. Another big thumbs up, and that is an Ultimate Edition. We've got a couple of Ultimate Editions scheduled for later this year. You may have heard of some of these shows, you may not have. Uh, how many of you heard of a little show called Full Metal Alchemist? Okay, good. Good, I'm glad a few of you heard of it. That meaning a heck of a lot of you. Nice one. You guys didn't see that, there's a chibi plush of Al looking very, very shocked, maybe scared. I can't tell. But regardless, the ultimate edition of Full Metal Alchemist is coming later this year. It is coming in October. And if you want to actually see a trailer for what the show looks like in HD, this being the original 2003 series, not Brotherhood, then you can actually watch it at our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash all the anime. Now, before I get back to what the Ultimate Edition is going to entail, why is it youtube.com forward slash all the anime? That is because at Anime Limited, a brand that we like to put out there is we are all the anime. It's one of our catchphrases, it's our tagline, if you will. So, we are all the anime. If you see a big A, usually red or blue, on the side of an anime release or somewhere on the anime release, it's one of ours. It's what I like to call, in a way, our seal of excellence. This is Anime Limited approved. This is what we've gone out of our way to work our hardest to bring you over here. Because, again, being a long-term anime fan myself, I want as high a quality release as I can. I want my friends who have emigrated to America to feel jealous that they can't get hold of it. Honestly. So, a little side story here. One of my best friends from school and college, he emigrated out to America, and this was like before Anime Limited were around doing the Ultimate Editions and such. And he was like, oh, I'm going to be able to buy some of these releases from America. And as soon as Anime Limited started announcing things, he was like, gutted, I can't get that. He was just proper, proper gutted. So this is why we do all we can with each and every one of our releases, to make it extra special. And Full Metal Alchemist is no different, because you get the entire 2003 series 
for the first time in high definition, big thumbs up, you also get a giant hardback book, which I think if the page count is correct, it's over 300 pages, which contains art, it's got episode guides. I think we've also gone the extra mile whereby if a character at some point in the show appears in the series, you can look through the book and find out when they actually appeared for the first time. This is how much detail we have got into in this release. But it doesn't stop there. You get some really cool art cards with it. The series will be split into two halves inside a giant box, which I'll get onto in a second, where half the series will be in each, each having their own rigid case, a digipack inside that folds out, and you get cards in each of them. But now the giant box that I mentioned, well, I might have told a little fib when I said a box. First of all, how many of you have seen the original Fortnite Alchemist? The show hands. Cool. How many of you remember the very, very big gate that appears in the series? So, imagine that gate, okay? So, just sort of imagine it, imagine it in front of you. It's a lot bigger. Now, imagine we made a scaled down version of it out of resin, and you can actually open up the gate, and inside that's where the series will be held. I see some ridiculously shocked faces over there. It's exactly what I thought when I got told this for the first time. This is what we're doing with our release, and it's limited to 1,000. There are only 1,000 of them, and you can pre-order it today if you're interested. It's exclusively through our web shop at alltheanime.com and through Zabby. And I'll just get this out there now. If you want more info and you want to see some concept art and such as to what this gate is going to look like, fullmetal.alltheanime.com. You can look it up on your phones if you want and such. Really easy to get to fullmetal.alltheanime.com. You can see what it looks like, and you can pre-order it today as well. And I think at current time, we have, I think about nearly half of all the 1,000 have been pre-ordered today. So if you want to get in there, you might want to get in there sooner rather than later. And Full Metal Alchemist, hi guys, welcome to the panel. How's it going? Don't, don't get Tim, I'm just saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, I'd be petrified if you had a giant saying hi to you as well. But hey. So yeah, with Full Metal Alchemist, it's a show that's really near and dear to my heart because it's one of the first anime I really, really sunk my teeth into. I've been an anime fan for a very long time. For any old school fans out there, some of my first anime being Dominion Tank Police and the Street Fighter 2 animated movie. There you go. Representing the old school and making me feel old. So, Full Metal Alchemist. Who's old? Who's old? No one here. No one here. No one here. There you go. Making me feel young. There you go. We're all young. But yes, Full Metal Alchemist. It's one of the first shows that I really, really got to sink my teeth into, as I'm sure many of you can agree as well. And being able to know that this show is coming to HD for the first time in the UK, and there's going to be a ridiculous resin box to go with it, a, a resin replica of the gate, and a giant art book filled with all that info, I need that on my shelf. I desperately need that on my shelf. Many people desperately need it on their shelf. And there's only a thousand of them. Did I mention it's UK exclusive? So, you can't actually get it in America. You can't actually get it anywhere else. And you know how I mentioned my friend was a little bit jealous earlier of the stuff that we were doing? Not like you're gonna rub it in or anything. <laughs> I may have rubbed it in just a bit. Oh, God, oh, God, God. Just a bit, not much, just a bit. Woo! God, we done though. It may have involved him, it may have involved him sending me a fairly angry meme. <laughs> Which is all he can do when he lives in North Carolina, what can I say? <laughs> but now, Ultimate Editions. I've mentioned we've done Gurren Lagann, I've mentioned we did Terror in Resonance, I've just mentioned Full Metal Alchemist. How many of you guys have heard of an old series called The Vision of Escaflowne? Yeah. Awesome! What? We're doing an ultimate edition of that! Woo. So many of you recently may have heard of the big Kickstarter that Funimation did in the US for a brand new dub of a director's cut version. Short version to kind of sum this up, our release will include the director's cut, our release will include the original version, it'll include the director's cut, it'll have both the original English dub, the original Japanese dub, and also should have the new Funimation dub as well, so we are not missing out on that. There is going to be a lot more to announce about our Escaflone release very soon. I can't reveal it today, but as, a, as my boss Andrew Partridge may have said at another panel recently, uh, if you're a fan of audio-based things, you might be happy with what else is going to be included. <laughs> Read between the lines, 
if you want. Also on the Ultimate Edition front, a show called Death Parade. Nice! That's an awesome reaction. So we're going to be doing Death Parade as an Ultimate Edition. Haven't got too many details yet, other than that we are going to try and get it out before the end of the year. And given that we're now in June, it's really... I like this passionate thumbs up that people are doing today. This is really cool. You don't get this in other places like London. Usually people just kind of sit there and maybe occasionally just go, Yeah! They're boring. <laughs> well, boring's an interesting word. Yeah, but we some, some people might say reserve. But back to Death Parade. Death Parade will be coming out all going well before the end of the year. Our Ultimate Edition will include both the DVD and Blu-ray version of the series. So no matter what happens, you can get the Ultimate Edition. More details to follow on that very, very soon. So that's the Ultimate Editions. But what else do we have in the pipeline? Because there's a lot. For example, some of our recent releases. How many of you like Tokyo Ghoul? Good. We've actually just released the second season of this. Route A, is it subtitled, I believe? Yes. Good. I'm glad we've all this. I, genuinely, I'm, I'm not even just trying to mess you around here. I love the passion you guys are showing. This is one of the most passionate panels I've done. It is so damn cool. So Tokyo Ghoul Route A, we've just released. Coming out at the end of the month on the 27th of June, which is, what, two weeks away? Week and a half-ish? Soon, 27th of June. I don't know what date it is. I'm tired. It's been a long time. Next week, nine days. N nine days, there you go. Whoever said that, thank you. Nine days time, Sword Art Online Part 4 will be available. You can complete your collection. And if you're a fan of mecha-based things, how many of you have heard of a show from about a year or so ago called Ald Noah Zero? Woo! We are releasing the first season of that on the 27th of June. It will be available as a limited edition Blu-ray set and a standard DVD set. And uh, you never know, if you wanted to get out of Zero today, if you were to pop down to, say, the second floor dealer's room, you maybe went to where that Gundam Mad booth is where all those DVDs and Blu-rays are, you might find it. You might. Unless everyone else has already bought it, but you might. But what else do we have coming up? Well, for those of you who want to get Terror in Resonance, but Ultimate Edition is just a little bit too much, have no fear. It is also available just as a straight-up DVD and a straight-up Blu-ray. We've got the regular edition Blu-ray today for you, downstairs in a dealer's room, or it's going to be out in a couple of weeks' time through the likes of Amazon, Zabby, Base.com, insert additional website name here. Yeah. HMB. Pardon? I, I guess eBay? I, I guess? Pardon? That's where you get yours. Okay, fair play. As long as you can get it, this is what's key. So, I've mentioned a variety of anime, and yes, Mr. Cameron, I know I'm giving you hell on the room, sorry. About that. All right. <laughs> so, I've mentioned a bunch of those things, but what have we, else have we got coming out later in the year? Well, there's a lot. For those of you who don't follow us on Facebook and Twitter, you can find us at facebook.com forward slash all the anime. Twitter, it's all the anime. It's generally me sort of handling those things. So if ever you see a comment or a response with the letters JG at the end, that's me. If you don't see a JG at the end, it's not me. So take that in one. But in terms of more titles that are coming out, I've mentioned a few films, I've mentioned a few series, I've mentioned Ultimate Editions. You can find more details on loads of our upcoming releases at alltheanime.com. But just to throw out a random question, how many of you like the word Gundam? How many of you have checked out our Blu-ray release from about last year of the original Mobile Suit Gundam? If you haven't, you should. And I'll tell you why, because Mobile Suit Gundam originally aired on Japanese television in about 1979, 1980? There you go, yeah, very, very late 70s, early 80s. So what we have been able to do is release a brand new HD remastered version of that. So. In other countries it's been released on DVD before, this is probably the best you're ever going to see it because it's been remastered from the film cells and it looks gorgeous on Blu-ray. Again, speaking as a very passionate anime fan, when I was blitz watching this to make sure I could actually get through all of it, because it's like 42 episodes total I think it is, I was gobsmacked at the quality of the remaster. If you think how old it is, you, you actually get to appreciate it in a brand new way. How many of you guys like to watch sort of old films and whatnot in general, like be it live action or anime and such? 
when you watch older stuff, you can kind of notice it looks old, it's of its time. But with this, you actually get to appreciate it in an entirely new way, because you can actually see the detail that went into it, and you notice animation techniques that they used, which people have refined into, into what's the way to put it? They've refined it into a way that blends in seamlessly nowadays, but it couldn't have been done back then, and it really was a stepping stone for so many things. But from Mobile Suit Gundam, we then go to the sequel, Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. Now, for those of you who have not heard of Zeta Gundam before, someone's shaking their head over there. Do you not approve of Zeta Gundam? Okay. Put the wing all the way in. Close, close your ears for a minute, we'll go talk about it. <laughs> Fair play. But Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, we are going to be releasing it on Blu-ray. Part one is due tentatively around the end of August. The first 1,000 units will come with a really swanky looking box to hold both parts of the series. Part two will be out later this year. It's like a giant snake getting cosplayed like that. It's really weird, anyway. So it's quite a weird sight. It's a dragon. Anyway, it's a dragon. Is it a dragon? I can't tell. Half train dragon. Half train dragon. There you go. I won't lie. I'm kind of partially blind in one eye at the moment, so I literally. Yeah. All I saw was like a giant black blob at the back of the big eye. That's all I can see from back here. So. Anyway, I digress. Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam. We're going to be releasing that again. Is a remaster. In many people's eyes, people may disagree. It is one of the standout Gundam series in the entire franchise. And you can pre order that today from various places. In fact, actually, that's our website until this coming Wednesday. We're doing a special offer on it where you can pre order it at a lower price and you will get that box. So if there's something that interests you, head over to our website, alltheanime.com, for the information. Now, I've rabbited on quite a lot and it's going to continue, might I add. But one thing I do want to do is I want to give you guys the opportunity to ask some questions. So, if you've got questions about anime limited titles, just anime in general, you want to know if I prefer Coke or Pepsi, if I prefer Corn Flakes or Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes, these are questions I've legit had at panels before, by the way, I'm not joking. <laughs> then if you can ask me anything you want, the only thing I will ask that we do not ask today is anything that flat out gives a spoiler to something. Because once at a panel, and a few of you are laughing because you may know this, let me tell you a little story. I think it was, it was a show in London, it may have been one of the big MCM Comic Cons in London. I was on a panel, and we were taking questions on the big main stage there. And then suddenly, and I'm going to make sure I don't actually give the spoiler, they said, hey, what do you think about, insert character name, something significant happens to them in this week's chapter of Naruto? And by something significant happens, they may have popped their clocks. And they said this in a crowded room with about a thousand people in there. And this chapter probably literally only just surfaced online. Suffice to say, people were a little bit peeved. <laughs> and all I could do was give my natural reaction of, oh, cheers for the spoiler. Which apparently went down the storm, I don't remember. But yeah, please do not give a spoiler in your question, unless you potentially want someone to get very annoyed at you. It's at your own peril. Are you ready, sir? Are you ready for the challenge? Board ready, good. I'm not. So, um, take your pick. I'll let you. I'll let you decide your order. Well, you did, uh, the release, uh, time of evening, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that was not actually the right sort of name that you actually said on the harbour. Is that something you're going to do in the future with other films? Is why you just be more So, to give people a bit of context for the question here, in case you're not aware, how many of you heard of the film called Time of Eve? It was a Kickstarter a few years ago. There's been a six-part series, I believe, which I believe you can still watch on Crunchyroll.com. I believe you can. There was a Kickstarter for the movie, and that got funded, and we at the Limited actually helped fulfill all of the UK backers with their, with their Kickstarters, including mine, because I wasn't at the company at the time. So that's what we did there, and then after that, we helped get some units into HMV and some other websites as well. Unfortunately, that is actually now out of print, so if you do find it anywhere, get it, because you literally will not find it anywhere else. In terms of whether we're going to do that again, do you mean as in us fulfilling a Kickstarter from UK perspective, or an actual Kickstarter? Just in general. I, I don't think anything is in the pipeline at the moment. I'm never going to say never, because you never know in this world. Business things happen when you don't expect. So, I don't actually know, but there's always a possibility. When it comes to Kickstarters specifically, We've done one for the film called Plasma Inverted, which some of you may have heard of. It's a wonderful film about, I like to describe it almost as like a Romeo and Juliet-like story with parallel gravity. 
Some of you sort of smirk to that, some of you are like, hmm. It is genuinely worth a good watch. It, it plays on a lot of gravity-based things. It's a really, really good film. We also did a Kickstarter for a film called My Mind Miracle, which has been a very long time coming. We know that. There is going to be another update on that coming very soon. I believe it's going to be a pretty good update as well, so hopefully that will be coming soon. So, yes, to answer your question, who knows? How's that for a long-winded answer to just saying who knows? Next question, sir. Next question, sir. This one's a bit uh, industry based, but okay. uh, what are the deciding factors in some of the features, some of, in some of the special features and limited editions you do, such as including the two QN Ligon movies in the QN Ligon Ultimate Edition? It is actually a very interesting question, that. And when it comes to special features, some of the time it's about what is actually available for us to include, because sometimes we can't include everything. Sometimes it. Back when Gurren Lagann was released, because it was before I was with the company, so I may get some facts wrong here, but hopefully I won't. It was at a time when Anime Limited was, in a way, sort of trying out an Ultimate Edition. Was it something that UK fans wanted? Is it something that could work over here? And it got a great reaction. So for the purposes of that, some additional material was included exclusively in the Ultimate Edition. But you can just get the TV series on its own on Blu-ray. We released that individually on its own, so if you just want the TV series, Standard Blu-ray is the way to go. If you're someone who's just got DVD, you can buy a complete DVD collection that includes all the series, the movies, and a few other bits of bobs that are on the bonus disc as well. But if you want it all on Blu-ray, the Ultimate Edition is the way to go. When it comes to what we can and can't include, it does very much depend on what is available to us and what we have access to as the greatest book. So, trying to think for a case in point. We have a film coming out on the 4th of July called Expelled from Paradise which has been a very long time coming. It's quite a unique film as well. It's, I would describe it, describe it as almost a, a CG anime hybrid type film. It's actually really cool. In fact, actually, quick plug for him, Johnny Young Bosch is one of the, the voices of the main characters in the English dub. So when he's on his panel later, if you want to ask him how was it working in Expelled from Paradise, do. Because he, he might not know the tenuous link that I've just set up. Let's see what happens. So when it comes to that, we were able to include a booklet with our release, we can include the art cards, but also we were able to include a making of, which, when it's a CG anime film, is quite a unique thing. And it's about, it's about 20 minutes long, I think, and it goes into great detail about the making of the film, and that's a really cool extra we were able to include. If it had been another time, we might not have been able to include it. It's usually just a case of what is available then that we have access to. Sometimes, and I've had this many a time on the Facebooks and Twitters and such, people have been like, why can't you include this? I really want this extra. Unfortunately, it's just something that can't happen. A, a recent case actually was, how many of you guys like Durarara? <laughs> awesome. We just released the first arc of the second season called Show. It's on DVD and Blu-ray now. There was something that we weren't able to include in that that was actually available in the American release. It doesn't mean to say we'll never be able to release it. It just means that at this time, we can't release it over here. It's something that we are looking into and wanting to be able to include in a future release, though. So if ever there's something that we can't include, or maybe there's something exclusive to us that wasn't available somewhere else, it's simply a case that we were able to get access to it. I hope that answers your question. Again, a long-winded way of saying it, but I hope it works. What's the Facebook name again? The Facebook name, ah, see, this works as a good little plug. So, if you want to go to our website, it's alltheanime.com. If you want to go to Twitter, give us a follow at twitter.com forward slash alltheanime. And the Facebook, facebook.com forward slash alltheanime. If you want to subscribe to us on YouTube, you can probably guess where this is going. Facebook.com forward slash alltheanime. All Right, we need to get a chant going now. I'm going to make sure this happens at every panel I do from now to try and get a chant going. I will make this work. Next that question. sounds like a really good idea, but we'll save that toward the end. <laughs> hey, um, like, what part, like, what does it take to, like, get a job in, like, animated distribution? Now, that's a loaded question. So, it's time for story time with Jeremy. Yay! So, the way I actually ended up working where I do now, it's quite a, a unique journey I took, because my background is actually in theatre. <clears throat> I'm, I'm a giant musical theatre nerd. I have done theatre. I've done theatre most of my life. I did a musical theatre degree at uni. And then yet, the week of my dissertation, I started doing freelance work making trailers for another anime company. 
Because, you know, that's how musical theatre works, right? Oh, of course. But what I was doing alongside that is I was actually doing my own website, where I was doing reviews of titles, I was doing news and such. It was a short-lived thing, but it got a bit of traction going for it. And so it was from that that I actually then attended conventions such as this, I went to big MCM events, I went all around the UK as much as I could because there's only so much budget I can allow. And I just was talking to the distributors on their booth. I'm just trying to get to know them, see if they can maybe try and remember me at a future event. And to my advantage, I'm really freaking tall. I'm a guy with really long hair. Okay, the long hair shot the microphone. Okay. So, um, the mic doesn't like me. Well, you're going to have problems for about. Mr. Microphone, how long have we got left of this? You've got problems for about another half an hour, mate. You've got problems. So, where was I? Yes, yeah, so I was talking to people at events. I would talk to, say, the, the representatives of Manga Entertainment before Anime Limited was going. It was Beans Entertainment. I would just talk to them, just on a casual level, not trying to get anything out of it. But then you start seeing each other at other events and you befriend each other. I'm sure we can all relate here. When you come to a convention like this, you recognize people, say, the next time on. And even if you've not spoken to them for the better part of a year, you just carry on like nothing's happened, like that time hasn't happened, you haven't skipped a beat, you carry on, it's how friendships are formed and what relationships. And that's basically how it worked with me. I ended up editing trailers for a while, I then ultimately transitioned into doing more PR work, and that led me to doing more community management type stuff, which then led me to moving north of the wall, as people like to say, to Glasgow, Scotland, and then working at Anime Limited. And that that's me encompassing about three years of my life into about two minutes, but that's literally what it was. It, it seems weird, sometimes you don't intend it to happen that way, because I had my heart set on theatre. I'm a big guy, I like to dance, I like to sing, I like to act. Dancing, you know, let's not talk about that. So, <laughs> but I like, to, I like to do all this kind of stuff, and I just ultimately ended up doing this. And it's really cool, it, it's a lot of hard work, believe me. Like. You have no idea how many hours go into all the releases that we do, but this is what I love to do, and sometimes if you've got the passion, it's just a question of just following that passion. And you know that you may not get anywhere really quickly, it might happen stupidly quickly for some people. I mean, my friend, again, who emigrated to America, it's seems like a running gag now, isn't it? My friend who emigrated to North Carolina, but he actually wrote a book about three or four years ago, then met his wife, and then emigrated to America, and it's only when he emigrated to America that his book suddenly got picked up by a publisher. And he had been talking to people for the better part of two years about trying to publish his book. He was getting nowhere. He had one meeting with someone in North Carolina, suddenly his book got picked up. Sometimes it's just about perseverance, and if you've really got a passion for something, show people that. But also, another thing which I really encourage people to try and do now is, for example, how many of you guys are YouTubers out? And you like to make content and such, or maybe you run a website and do reviews, use this time to your advantage in as best a way as you can. If you get a chance to review something, review it. If you think you won't like it, review it anyway. Even if you don't publish it, just review it for yourself because that's how you can hone your craft, that's how you can get better, that's how you can realize something about what your strengths and weaknesses are. If you like to do something on YouTube and on camera stuff, for example, Personally, I'm not a big fan of looking at myself on camera, but it's a bit difficult when I'm doing stuff like this, so I just go with it. But you know what? I enjoy doing it. And if you enjoy doing something, that passion will come through, and it will rub off on people, they'll want to get passionate about it, they'll get involved, and that will probably help you tenfold into you trying to want to launch into a future career. Another friend of mine basically worked a shelf stacking job in Tesco on night shifts for about two years. All the while, he was building his portfolio of reviews of films, and then he ultimately got a job doing reviews of one of the big magazines. It may have been Sci-Fi Now or Empire. I think it was. Like it, it just worked out for him because he spent all that extra time. And sometimes it will take a long time to get it there, but if you are really passionate about something, it will go such a long way. Does that help? Yeah. Good. And the next question. Well, you see, the first reaction I go with is a chicken katsu curry, because let me tell you, if I have a katsu curry, it ain't there much longer. The dish arrives, it's gone pretty bloody quickly. I am, 
I am very, what's the word? If you put a miso ramen in front of me, that will also go. I'm kind of quite simple with the dishes that I go for and stuff, but sometimes simple is the best approach. I'm not really a seafood guy, so if there's any fish in there and stuff, not really my thing. So that chances are that may either not get devoured, or it may just not get devoured at all. If that makes sense. Really bad analogy, roll with me on that. So yeah, I would just go with the straight up chicken cassie curry, because if people don't want the chicken, you could always replace it with the tofu, which then means that anyone can have it. And so then it's the best of both worlds. A very good question. We actually can't release Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood because we don't have the rights to it. So our release is literally just giving a 2003 series. But the really cool thing about Full Metal Alchemist is that you can already get Brotherhood in the UK. It was released by Manga Entertainment on Blu-ray. They also did the movie The Sacred Star of Milos, and also did the follow-up to our series, The Conqueror of Shambhala, on Blu-ray. So you can actually get those now, but our Ultimate Edition is specifically the 2003 series. I hear you. Uh, if you can reference, what kind of glow stick do you think best represents yourself? <laughs> that was actually the best question I've ever heard. Well, do you know what, actually? Based, how many of you guys were aware of me before you came to the panel today? How many, is, how many of you, is this the first time you've ever heard or seen of me personally? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so based on your feelings as to what I've been saying today, what colour best suits me? Just kind of shout out a few colours. Thank you, purple, green, red. Yo, yeah, lilac, who's like a lilac? <laughs> red. Um, Orange. 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 White. Okay. Blue. Blue. So. Rainbow. If I... Rainbow. 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 Rainbow glow stick. So, what colour best describes me? That is actually a really good question. Um, so my, my actual favourite colour is turquoise. Which is a bit of a cop-out because it is green and blue. But you know what? I'm a giant, so as far as I'm concerned, that works. Um, do you get turquoise glow sticks? Yeah, I've got programmable ones, so I think it'll You've got a programmable blue... You've got a programmable glow stick? I didn't say that, people. Whatever I nearly said, I didn't say that. <laughs> so, can't take it back now. You, what what colours can you program? It's RGB, so that you've got an RGB slider. It's got an RGB slider. And you can you can, you can uh, put in like up to uh, I think it's like thirty different colours. Up to thirty <laughs> different colours in a glow stick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm supporting it. I'm supporting it. I'll let you. I tell you what, you decide. What colour should it be? Magenta. Okay. <laughs> Have you got magenta on that? I'm doing that for the moment. I will program it for the next event. You don't at the moment, you'll program it for the next event. Okay. I'm panicked. To be fair, magenta is one of the rare colours, so that's cool. You could have just gone with, I don't know. Pink. I'm trying to think of a really random colour that no one would say. Red. The shade your, your enemy's eyes go when you make them feel sad. <laughs> That'll do. That's a very oddly specific answer. Really that, that will get the award for probably the most random and best question, by the way. Uh, if I had to give one, that's that's pretty much up there. Do you know what? While you go to the next person, I'll, I'll fill in some time. Uh, how many of you guys are a fan of Love Live? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, up in Edinburgh late last year, there was the European premiere of the Love Live movie. It was big held at the Edinburgh Film House. It was all sorts of people there. You could tell people would come from far and wide to come and see this. People who are over at the time in Edinburgh from Japan are watching this. And everyone was just ready to watch this. There was a proper anticipation in this cinema, ready to see this European premiere. And I kid you not, five minutes in, a glow stick came out. Five minutes in, someone just suddenly went, yeah! And in about quicker than a hiccup, a steward was like, damn. Put that thing down. <laughs> it was just. <laughs> I've had some random cinema experiences in my life. Seeing a glow stick busted out during a Love Live movie is one of the best. <laughs> hey! Oh, blimey, okay. We've got a list of weight, right? Sorry, you know. Uh, there were some people who 
we want to know about some releases that might have been a bit delayed. So I think one was Summer Life. Um, is it Summer Life and Lincoln? Summer Life and Lincoln! Really cool show! The quick way I sum it up, imagine if you wanted to be a Power Ranger and it actually happened. Do you know what? It's a really cool show though. It, it goes really, 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 really random. It's really, really cool. You get part one's available now, but I can tell where this is going because this is about part two, correct? So it's been a very long time since we released part one. It was around, I want to say October, November time, maybe even December. It's been a long wait for part two. Haven't actually got a definitive date on it yet, but it is still in the works. I know some people online have said, has it been cancelled? 100% has not been cancelled. Partly for two reasons. One, because we've still got it on our schedule. We're just trying to work it in so we can get out. Two, because I love the show and I want to own part two. <laughs> yes, selfish needs do come into play, people. What can I say? Next question. Um, um, in relation to... Well, there were some people wondering whether or not the people would be interested in the Oh, this is probably about um, the Makoto Shinkai Twin Pack, I imagine. Well, some, yeah. Shinkai Twin Pack. Shinkai Twin Pack. Shinkai Twin Pack. Oh, Shirabako. Are we going to get it? Do you know what? Shirabako is amazing. If you people ever want to watch an anime about what it's like to work in the anime industry and what goes on behind the scenes, you need to watch this show. It's called Shiro Barco. It's so, so good. You can watch it on Crunchyroll. It's available on there. Honestly, everyone, I encourage you, if you've not seen it before, watch it. I would love for Anime Limited to release this title. Unfortunately, I've got no news on whether that is a possibility or not. We don't have the license for it, as far as I'm aware, anyway. But if you've not seen it before, people, make a note of it. Shiro Barco. It's such good fun. It's really, really good. And also, legitimately, some of the characters are based off real people in the industry. So from the perspective of, sometimes we deal with Japanese guests coming over to some events and whatnot, we actually see guests that we've helped out in an anime. It's quite a trick. It's quite weird. But it's really, really good fun. <coughs> Thank you very much for having me What's your question? What's your favourite anime? What's my favourite anime? Oh, here we go. Hmm. Well... I've watched a lot of anime in my time. How much? How much? Oh, so too much. Wait, too much is probably the correct answer, actually. If I had to pick one right now, off the top of my head, I would probably go with Girls in Panza. So Girls in Panza. It's the idea, it's, what's the way to put it? A school that deals with tanks, and the tanks are, you could describe their tanks being their PE lesson. And then battle each other in tanks. Yeah, it's awesome. really, really good fun. It's it's just such a good laugh. It's really, really good. That's if awesome. you guys haven't seen it before, MVM released the series, I believe. You can actually get the series downstairs, I believe, in Dealers Room of the Gundam Mad Booth. If not, it's on DVD and Blu-ray. Really, really check it out. It is such, such good fun. Girls and Panzer. Though, if I had to give another one you want to give, give you a film, for example, without shadow of a doubt, I would say the Street Fighter II animated movie from the early 90s, because that is one of the things that got me into anime, and it's so good. And also, time for a bit of a nerd out. The soundtrack, I'm a giant heavy metal fan. Can you look at the soundtrack to that film in English dub? It is ridiculous. It's got <laughs> Alice in Chains, it's got Korn in there. It is ridiculous. It's heavy, and then you watch the Japanese version, and it's like you're watching an entirely different film. It is mental. Jeremy's no doubt over. Hey! <laughs> so sorry, I, d I never really got to respond to Nerdos because I just started going, he's worse than I am. I feel better. Oh. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. You can say you had your hand up for a while. interesting question actually so are we going to release any other classics on dvd or blu-ray following on from our full metal panic release which i'm glad you really like full metal panic because for those of you who have not watched full metal panic before awesome. let's have a think let's try and do a quick elevator pitch the a team with people in school 
<laughs> that probably didn't work. Check it out. Trust me, it's really, really good. Yeah, it's, but um, it's something we're looking into. Like we love classic anime, uh, uh, all the anime. There you go, right? Unintentional. So we try and we try and bring as many films out as we can. We've released Satoshi Kon's film Perfect Blue, which I'm sure many of you have heard of before. In fact, we're actually doing a limited edition steelbook exclusively with Zabby for it. But in terms of other classic anime, we know there are lots out there that constantly get mentioned to us. Well, trust me, we know. And there's loads we want to do. It's just a question if we can get the rights to them. So at the moment, I can't remember, but off the top of my head, I don't think there's anything major in the pipeline. Though we do have one of the oldest films in history coming out soon, uh, currently by the name of Momotaro's Divine Sea Warriors, which is kind of like a Japanese propaganda film from World War, where the actual, originally, I think it was the, the distributor told the people who had all the film cells, destroy this, this must never see the light of day again. And then someone just went, all right, we did it. Shifty eyes, implying they hadn't. And then suddenly this came to light, and now there's a, there's a wonderful remaster of it. And now we're gonna be releasing one of the oldest animated films, which influenced uh, Osama Tezuka, one of the greatest anime manga authors of all time, and it, it's gonna inspire it inspires so many other people, and we're gonna be releasing this. And perhaps somewhat amusingly of all, the British turn up in Momotaro Divine Sea Warriors. If it's a Japanese propaganda film, you can probably guess in what way that happened. I shan't say any more. But so that's an example of, an, of probably an ultra classic, if I had to make another category for classics. But there are loads of others we would love to bring over, or maybe even upgrade in some ways onto the right? Like I know, for example, Outlaw Star. It's a classic series that loads of people like. We've done a remastered version of it on DVD, which I'll tell you something, if you're playing it on a Blu-ray player, it looks like you're watching a Blu-ray. It's really freaking good, that remaster. But we know people want a Blu-ray, and it's something we're constantly looking into, but literally no news, no clue if that's ever going to be a possibility. Does that answer the question? Cool, sort of. But in terms of other classics, hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, if you guys ever have any suggestions of things you would like us to see if we can bring out or try, hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Attack on Titan Season 2. Attack on Titan Season 2. Some might not, some might not describe it as a classic because it doesn't actually exist yet. But, I mean, as for Attack on Titan Season 2, I don't think they've even announced Season 2 yet. I mean, one would like to think it is Hunter. They have announced it. Cool. In that case, then, in that case, then, ask me next year. <laughs> but in terms of whether we'll actually end up with it or not, I have no idea. Probably not. Chrono Crusade! Do you know what? Chrono Crusade, right? Oh, yes. Really, yes. really cool show. Is it? If you've not seen it before, that might be because you can't get it anymore to tap print. But it is a really, really good show. That is a series I would like to see us bring out, but again, I have no idea if that's going to be a possibility or not. But I'm glad there's one other person in the UK who wants that. <laughs> Hunter? The original Astro Boy. It's an interesting one, just because um, one of the things, so to sort of go into more industry talk, if you will, one of the things that is a really key element to any release that we do is from a business perspective, and I hate to kind of bring this into play because it sounds a bit crummy to put it like this, but unfortunately business perspectives do have to come into play on this. Is it something that people will, that many people will want to buy? Can we justify the cost of producing it? For example, the Full Metal Alchemist Ultimate Edition, it was a big, big gamble what we planned for that, and potentially it could have fallen flat on our faces, but we are doing very well at the moment in terms of the cost and how many people have ordered it and how that is shaping up. So as it stands, that is proving to have been a worthwhile investment. But other things, sometimes you may not make the money back, and that money can help fund future releases. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, whether we like, like, or, like it or hate it, to admit it, it is a business. And while we're all really passionate about anime, money talks. And if we don't have the money, we can't bring something over how we want to. This is just my personal opinion I should add. I'm not speaking for anyone else at the company. But when it comes to Astro Boy, if there is a possibility, I'm sure it's something we can look into. Hi, I am. Hey. I know uh, MCM late last year you announced quite a few series that were supposed to come out. So we did, yeah, didn't we? I, I, we were announced like 15, I think. Uh, the uh, One Punch Man Prison Story. Ah, whoa, oh, ah, I will hold that thought there. That wasn't us that announced One Punch Man, that was Manga and Animatsu. Uh, 
It's a different company. That said, where is One Punch Man? <laughs> I need One Punch Man on my shelf. He's downstairs, actually. I'm sorry? He's downstairs somewhere in the dealer room. If it is, I'm getting it. It's One Punch Man's back. Sorry, anyway, I digress. Prison school, I'm not sure if you have food wars. Uh, Food Wars is a Manga Animatsu one. Prison, Prison School is one of ours. Yeah. No updates on it at the moment, but should be before the end of the year, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and also, you have Tiger Woody. Is there any plans of doing Tiger Woody in the live show? Um, no plans, as far as I'm aware, for Tiger and Bunny in a live action show, because I don't believe we have the rights to it. Uh, Anime Limited specifically, we have the rights to the two movies, which is the beginning, which is, you could call it. A, a sort of retelling of the first few episodes, but with a giant curveball thrown in that actually makes it differ from the original series. And then we also have the second movie called The Rising, which, for argument's sake, it does take place after the events of the series, but they do give you a quick recap at the start of the film so you don't feel entirely lost as to what's going on. So when it comes to Tiger and Bunny, first of all, I really like it. It's a superhero show. It should be really, really massive. I don't know why it isn't, but at the same time, there, there isn't any more anime. I want there to be more Tiger and Bunny anime. Some of you guys may have seen some of the merchandise downstairs of Tiger and Bunny. All of it looks so rad. And also, how most of the characters are actually sponsored by real companies is really, really cool. There's one character that's sponsored by Domino's Pizza. <laughs> Another character is sponsored by Pepsi. And her entire tagline is about drinking Pepsi, like, I'll make you feel cold once you drink this Pepsi. And stuff like this. It, that's probably a bad example, but it's basically that. So I want there to be more Tiger and Bunny, but unfortunately there isn't any, so can't bring it. <coughs> uh, yeah, this is the last question here. Last question. No pressure. Let's see what we get. Okay. It's not us. It's Magra Entertainment, uh, but you can still throw it my way if you want. I was just wondering, kind of like, was there any plans to release the OVA and Yeah. So, now I'm going to say this first and foremost, this is my personal viewpoint on it, and what I'm going to say is very much me and your of Anime Limited. As far as I'm aware, the OVAs are treated separately from the series. So when it comes to, say, say if Anime Limited licenses a series, I can't think of one on top of my head, for argument's sake, let's just say Outlaw Star, because it's an older title. We license the series, if there was an OVA that wasn't part of the contract, we don't have the rights to that OVA. So in the case of Attack on Titan, because that originally, oh, what was it, did it get released with the one with the manga? I think it was, uh, the No Regrets OVA. So in that case, that would probably be, that, because it would have been released with the manga in Japan, that probably would have stuck to being a manga, as in book, not manga entertainment based deal. So as far as I'm aware, that wouldn't be possible because it is very much part, it's very much a different license. That said, one would like to think that manga would love to have it. So. I'm hopeful, I'm as hopeful as you guys are that we can actually get to see that with, with a quote unquote proper release, because I would like to see it happen. Hope that helps, at all. Awesome. Well, Reverend, we've actually got still some time because a few more questions if you're willing to answer them. Yeah, do it. Do it. Let us pick someone from this side. You, sir. You, sir, if you have a question. And, uh, hey. Uh, you mentioned Esther Glory, which combines fantasy and um, Do you think those sort of anime still combine genre? And if you could personally choose like two genres you would like to see, what would they be? Does fantasy and mecha combine more? I think it does, because it's something very unique and it's not something that you see very often. If you take something like Gundam, you've obviously got the mecha element, or Out Number Zero as well, I'll throw that in there. Very, very mecha based and they may go into space and such, but I love how Escaplone combines the fantasy elements. It's really, really good and I, I to date myself once again, I remember watching it on, oh, what's the channel, the old Fox Kids Network? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds familiar. Oh there you go, people say yes, yeah, so I'm not going to space crazy. So I, I remember watching it on there, and I love the show. If I could combine two genres myself, I'm very much an action fan, but I also like comedy. So if I had to say combine something to make it into what I would like, it would actually be what Girls and Panza and Full Metal Panic ended up being. Sort of those sort of elements. It's very difficult to sort of pinpoint to exact genres, but to give an idea as to what would be perfect for me, something like a Full Metal Panic or a Girl to the Panda. You've had your hand of quite a while for your Hey. I was wondering, how did the deal for uh, Vision for Funimation come about? Do you think it's subtly announced or something like 
To be honest, it, it's a pretty simple affair. It's a case of we're going to be distributing some types of score Funimation. It, that's the cheap way to do it, really. Uh, I mean, when it comes to announcing it, again, I'll say this from my personal perspective, it's it's just something that's happening. But there isn't any grand master plan behind it or anything. It's just, it happens to be we're going to be distributing some Funimation titles now. And that's really all there is to it. So no real big story behind it. I, I know it sort of ended up becoming a bit of news, which kind of caught us off guard in some ways, because I didn't expect that to be the case. But sometimes that's just the way things work out, that there was never any master plan or anything like that behind it. As far as I'm aware, I'd like to think there wasn't. But yeah, we're gonna be bringing some animation-based titles over for those of you who haven't heard. And there'll probably be more news on those coming very, very soon. Admittedly, it's not something I'm heavily involved with at the moment, I'll put in brackets, but I don't know if I will be, so to speak. But yeah, there will be some stuff coming. I think there's going to be a few things coming out as DVD Blu-ray combo packs to begin with, just to help get some of those titles out over here. I know, based on looking at my personal email, though, because my email is very open, but it's jeremy at alltheanime.com. If you haven't got a question, feel free to throw it my way. I get back to them as soon as I can. I may regret saying that now, who knows? <laughs> but yeah, I've had quite a few emails from people saying, you know, we really don't want combo packs. And I've obviously forwarded that information on where I can. But sometimes you've got to start somewhere and you've got to work from there. So whether combo packs will be the only way they'll be coming, I honestly don't know. Whether there'll be split SKUs, if you will, split formats, DVD and Blu-ray, I don't know at the moment. It, it's something I, I honestly can't really comment on too much because I, I don't know a lot of the information myself yet. But yeah, like I say, that's that's just what it is. We're just, doing, we're just distributing some titles. Sorry for kind of a lame duck answer, but that's, that's the truth. <laughs> Do you reckon I can get away with emailing you notice me sent by? Yes, <laughs> You can if you want, but you might not get a response. <laughs> but you won't notice me then. You exactly. <laughs> ah. You evil person. <laughs> How long do you think it'll take for the ultimate Funimation to be released? Because I know it's to sell out online. Uh, it's a very interesting question. How long will the ultimate edition of FMA take to sell out? <laughs> this is a weird way to put it. It's going to entirely depend on whether it's all sold out by the time it's released or not. Because there are literally only 1,000 of these being made. So the way we're doing it is, and you can get all the details on this at fullmetal.alltheanime.com, the website that I mentioned earlier, <coughs> excuse me, is you can currently pre-order it for a particular price until July the 5th, I believe it is. Then it goes up in price by a bit. And that's for about another month or two, I believe. And then after that, it will go to sort of what the retail-based price will be. That's the way it's working. If before the pre-order window, if I phrase it that way, closes, they're all sold out, that's it. But if there are still some available by the time it comes out in October, then those units will be made available to other retailers. So it might end up being on the likes of Amazon or Base, maybe go to HMD's website for all we know, but we're not gonna know until we actually get to that release date itself. So it's a bit of a weird one, I can't actually give you a definitive answer, but literally it's gonna depend on how many people order it before its release date a lot. Well, we've got time for two more questions, so okay. you've had your hand up as well. What? So, um, what do you own the rights to SAO? I wish I personally owned them, but no. <laughs> um, but yeah, Anime Limited, we have the rights to the second season specifically, so Sword Art Online 2. Okay, so, um, will you be bringing out a, or do you have plans to bring out an ultimate collection for it? Do you know what? We would love to do that, but we can actually only release it over four parts. So it's not because we wanted to release them over four parts that we had, it's because we actually had to release it that way. But that's why, with, with the four parts we've done, we've done our utmost to give you the most packed release we can, including that book that I mentioned at the top of this panel, where you get lots of info, you get interviews with Japanese producers and such inside, you get to hear about the Kirito's snuggle sheet in one of them, you get to... It, you get really detailed information and you get episode recaps. This is why we've tried to pack as much as we can in at an affordable price as we can. Because at the end of the day, we've all only got so much budget in this world and so much money that we get that we can use to buy our anime. So we always take that into account with every release we do. So whether that will change in the future or not and we can do a complete collection of Sword Art Online 2, I honestly don't know at the moment. But you can bet if we can, at some point, that we will. I apologize, we've run out of time, unless you fancy answering one last question. Oh, then do one last question. Everyone knows to go to alltheanime.com or facebook.com forward slash alltheanime or twitter.com forward slash alltheanime. Please don't be picking it. Would you like to pick the final uh, question? Oh, you're going to put the 
thing on me. Yep. Um, because I feel like I've been kind of... To be fair, you've had your hand up for a very long time, so we'll end with you. You go, sir. Oh, a lot of them using 3D animation. Sorry, I thought you were actually saying eight shows season three. I was getting really confused. Um, I'm cool with 3D animation. I think it. I think it's a cool little addition to it. It adds a bit of spice to it. Sometimes it can work better than others. Sometimes it can look a bit. That's the only way I can describe it. If, I, if someone's trying to transcribe, it's good luck for trying to transcribe that sound. But yeah, I think having an addition of 3D anime is a cool addition. It's something different. It adds something unique into the water. We have all these different genres, and sometimes people just do complete computer-generated stuff. Some people like to do hand-drawn stuff. But then you get the 3D element thrown in, and it, it's a bit of a curveball. And I like it. I always think having something different is a really cool. It's a really cool thing, and it keeps freshening it up. For example, like, if there's a film franchise that you really like, and then suddenly they decide... I'm going to pick something hypothetically. Um, X-Men. There are lots of X-Men films. Let's be fair, some of them ain't been that good. I'm looking at you, all Origins Wolverine. But then, but then you look at some of the more recent ones, like, for example, Days of Future Past, and in my case, I really liked X-Men Apocalypse, even though the best description of Apocalypse I heard... I promise you I won't give you too much. Um, the best description of Apocalypse I heard is that he was a marauding rage smurf that looked like a chewed up pencil tip. <laughs> that was from a review in Time Out London. I laughed so hard. But then you, and so to get back on the topic, but then you look at the way that they've almost done a reboot, they've kind of gone back into the past to bring it into the future with X Men. I really like that. It's a curveball, and it's something you don't expect. So if ever they, they try something in anime that you don't expect, Give it a try. Expelled from Paradise is a fully CG anime movie. And it's very different. It can take a few minutes to get used to have the look of it. And it's a solid film. I really like it. And it's something different. And it's always cool, in my opinion, if there is something different in this world. Because everyone has different tastes. So let's embrace that fact. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. I will say, if you guys get to find, if you guys want to talk to me more, I'm down in the dealer's room at the Gundam Mad Booth. If you find the wall of Gundam, You'll, you'll know what I mean when you see it. Yeah. Then, um, there you go, you see. Uh, yeah, feel free to ask me a question there. I'll be there probably until the dealer's room closes. So yeah, feel free to talk to us. And if you're on the social media and you want to throw a question our way, at all the anime on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much, guys. Woo!